everyone, the Crafty Atelier or Angela is here with another kitchen DIY. Almost done. I found these at Michael's. They were half off. And so I got, I believe, six of them. I think there was the last of them. But I'm going to be using these beads with some hot glue and going to give these little books some texture because I will be paper macheing them in the end. So I'm going to hot glue this book binding uh, that well faux book binding uh, to these because I want them to look like really old weathered mossy books so that's kind of what we're going towards so here I do the spine now I'm going to be gluing all the beads on yes these are steampunk hearts but they don't look like that in the end <laughs> Um, I'm going to also be gluing beads all the way around, kind of almost looking like rivets, um, like holding leather together. So as you can see here, and I'm just placing beads down and then I have these almost like wire cabochon kind of things. So that's kind of what I do. So the next step is a bit messy uh, as it's paper mache. So that'll be really fun. <laughs> Get your hands dirty a little bit, but you don't have to. You can always just use a brush. It's a lot harder and a lot more time <laughs> consuming. So what I did before was add some pages, some faux pages. So this is what I have. I am just using some water, some Elmer's glue, the watered down Elmer's glue. <laughs> Elmer's glue and that's it I'm just taking some paper towel one ply so if it's two ply I ripped them in half um, basically pulling them apart uh, to be very very thin so if you don't want texture on your books that's totally fine you can paint them if you want you can do whatever you want uh, with your books <laughs> or your uh, storage hideaways but for me I got these on sale I'm using paper mache to make them look weathered and old and a bit more like leather um, it kind of turns out almost like the hocus pocus spell book a little bit almost that kind of texture like it would be so easy to add some stitches to some of these um, overlapping paper towels and it look exactly like that book so there's another idea <laughs> Um, yeah, I fiddle with it a bit, but it does dry fairly quickly if you use thin layers. So for this one, I did a small book and a large book because it's going to be holding my pot mitts, my like, um, pan mitts, you know, the hot, hot pads. Uh, so these two will be holding those. So I glued them together so they kind of look like they're, you know, on a shelf, <laughs> So that's what I did. I glued them with E6000 and I did not uh, paper mache that area. So I based them in black, all of them, <laughs> everything, um, even the faux pages. And then I'm going to use this Sienna and this Nutmeg Brown and I'm going to basically make leather <laughs> out of these colors. Uh, with this texture. So basically I'm just dry brushing a very heavy dry brush. When I say heavy dry brush, I mean that the uh, brush has a bit more paint on it still, even after you've done the dabbing. Uh, so it's not like super, super light. So I'm trying to cover a lot of area with this heavy dry brush. So I do this with the Nutmeg and the Sienna. Uh, the Sienna I like because it gives a little bit of depth because it's a bit more reddish uh, on the warmer side than than the other. Um, so it gives it a little bit more depth just to have a couple colors on there. Um, and I do this fairly quickly. You can see this is actually sped up, but I am actually moving very, very fast because acrylic does dry fairly fast. So I will be trying to blend a little bit on the edges as well for the for both colors
And now that we are here, we have everything where I want it. Now I'm taking some rose gold and some antique white, and I'm going to lightly dry brush this one. So it's not a heavy dry brush. I'm just trying to pick up just basically the highlights of the book itself, the texture of it. And uh, now I am taking the green and sort of like, it says a Christmas green, but it sparkles. So, cause I wanted some sparkle. <laughs> so it's very shiny metallic. So I kind of blended them together and then I made this sort of mossy color around the edges of all the books, even on the spine. And I really like how it turned out. I want to put some actual moss on this, but it goes in my kitchen and I'm like, nah, that's okay. I might still do something for my uh, tea book, but I don't, I'm, I'm gonna leave it like it is. So here I am doing the edges. I just think this gives a bit more weathered look. I think it's a very, you know, naturey, very fairy-like, very fairy tale-ish. So, and I, I think it goes well with my kitchen um, being sort of that Goblin Core, Lord of the Rings, kind of fantasy-esque uh, theme. So here I am, I am taking this antique white and I'm going to heavily dry brush on the edges. I also Mod Podge everything at the end. So I just didn't show that, it just globbing it on. <laughs> Um, the edges, uh, you're not going to see them very much, so I didn't really care what they looked like, but here I did some lettering. This is the first round. I do two coats on each and of this emperor's gold, um, cause it doesn't, it's very thin and not opaque enough. <laughs> so that's why I had to do two coats. Uh, I am going off a of reference picture for the lettering so plus I sketched it in you just can't see it <laughs> yeah your girl can't freehand like that <laughs> no <laughs> but uh, I do make up one book my tea book is called I I called it Hobbiton a history because it just to me I think that would be a book that they would have that somebody compiled all the stories of Hobbiton and all of the families that lived there, uh, just like Hogwarts, a history. <laughs> so I kind of combine my two favorite, uh, two favorite films slash books series uh, together on that one. And that was just my creative allowance for myself. <laughs> Don't come at me. 